Hello, welcome to episode 100 of the Epic Film Challenge 2. A thousand and one movies you must see before you die. A tenth of the way there. It only took three fucking years. Well, we haven't been, you know... No, I, I mean, it's, it's the last five or so months we've been really focusing on this. But anyway, episode 100, you've seen the intro, Alien. Gets better every single time. We watched this. We watched this a couple of days ago, and uh, it does get better every single time. <laughs> it's just. I mean, let's just let's just get out of the way. It is a film you will see before you die. It's no doubt. It's if you haven't, shame on you. Yeah, it's it's absolutely essential. Uh, my history with this film, uh, you know, I saw it very young. Um, Aliens. Say how young? I would say twelve, thirteen, probably. Oh, um, aliens. Same same time, because. No. I thought you said your mom showed you this movie to make you shut up or something, or make you go to sleep. I, I saw I, I saw Aliens when I was zero, meaning that she put it on the TV and I suddenly shut up and watched the whole thing like that. So Aliens is technically the first movie I ever watched, um, <laughs> and that story that, that story alone made me want to see Aliens, you know. And and so I watched it when I was about twelve, thirteen. After years of campaigning against my mum to to let me to see fifteen, eighteen films, and then I saw Alien. Didn't like it as much. It's not as it's not as fast paced as Aliens. Um, it's not as uh, fun and enjoyable, I suppose, as Aliens in a lot of ways. Um, but I, I always liked it. I always came back to it, and I always kept watching it and watching it. And then I, I introduced it to you. I'm pretty sure. Was it the first time you'd yeah, seen it when I, we got I, together? I have an incredible fear of aliens. Right. Yeah. That's yeah. It's true. It's um, like uh, spiders. That I was scared of those, but aliens fucking terrify me. Yeah. I cannot see science again. <laughs> Big so, green men, no. Cannot see it. What? You just spoiled that for me. All I, all I knew about science is that there were crop circles and stuff. Uh, aliens are the green men. Ruined it. Absolutely ruined it. Anyway. <laughs> Ow! Oh. Anyway. You saw that, I barely touched it. Yeah, I'm, I'm kidding. Yeah. I'm exaggerating for comedic effect, but I'm not very good at being You're comedic, failing. so I am failing. Alien. Um, so uh, that's funny, because I campaigned my mum to kind of show me the films, and I was kind of campaigning for you to watch the films with me, because we, we watched all four of them and stuff. Um, and yeah, so let's just talk about the first one and not kind of go into the rest of the franchise. Um, but we will. Suffice it to say that three and four are not in the book, nor should they be. <laughs> but um, Aliens definitely is. Um, but Aliens is in the uh, in the book. Yes, and we'll we'll be talking about that I at some point. Alien. Yes, uh, oh. and it's you know the, 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 it would be ridiculous if it wasn't. Alien, very simple setup. It's the the monster movie kind of, but on a space station, and I just I just love like how it came about. You know, it was this guy who had this idea about an alien film. Uh, and then he came up with this stroke of brilliance where it would be that the alien would kind of impregnate you and then it would burst out of your chest. And then someone else kind of took the script and there's a lot of controversy around who really wrote the, the final version of the film that we see on screen. There was so much, so much dispute from the original writer and the other people who got involved. And then you bring in someone like Ridley Scott to direct it. And then you get this weird guy, H.R. Giga, to come up with the design of the He's alien. So it's like, it, it literally is like the devil's nightmare, you know, come to life. Just his, his artwork is haunting to me. And then, it is. I've uh, seen his his paintings or drawings and stuff. Yeah. His, his designs for the set and stuff. And it's it's disgusting. In yeah. a way. Really, it's like, oh, you, you don't want to, like, you, you just imagine it smelling really bad if you ever <laughs> entered that room, you know? And it's like, everything is like sticky. It's just horrible. Mm. And, and the... The shapes and the colors and everything is just really, really brilliant. Yeah, and then that you, guy was fucked up. Yeah, he said he, he said he was haunted by his dreams, and you, you hear him talk, and he just sounds weird. And I mean, it's, he's dead now, isn't he? Yeah, he passed dead away. Last a, a, year? Huh? No, I think, fairly recently, a few years ago, I think that Giga passed away. But um, but anyway, and then you have like the people who came in and were brilliant conceptual artists in terms of uh, you know uh, science fiction and machinery, like the ships and stuff like that. And then you have the corridors, the set design, and then you have the music, Jerry Goldsmith. I think the music is, I just love it. It's so. I love that little. Uh, All of it. Or, or whatever yeah, 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 it is, yeah, like I mean, that, yeah, yeah. that little. Uh, yeah. It's just brilliant. It's, it's so subtle, but it, even, it really gets under your skin and. Even the intro to me, the the. The, um, the title sequence at the, the beginning. The title sequence in the beginning, yeah, is it's just brilliant because it describes the whole movie. Because all it is is the camera panning past the planet. 
Yeah. It's the planet, right? Or is it the I, moon of the planet? I'm not sure, but... But, uh, and one, like, line by line pops up for the word alien. Really, really slowly, and it's just, just like, whatever music yeah, yeah, yeah. in the background. And it's just suspense, you know? And that's the whole movie, so yeah. in suspense. Every time I watch it, too, I get so uncomfortable. <laughs> and I'm like, I just want this to be over, but I don't. Because right. I'm, I know what happens. You're talking about the whole, the whole film now, not just I'm the title sequence. About, yeah. yeah, 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 the whole movie. Of course, I'm not uncomfortable watching the title <laughs> sequence. Yeah. But it's just, it's, it fits. Yeah, it that, does. That's it what's does. so great. The whole freaking movie fits together. And it's just when things start happening and you're just waiting for something to happen, you know? Yeah. And so you suspenseful. It's that's just, you're on the edge the whole time, you're just waiting for it, and I get so tired when I watch the movie. I think that's the mark of a great film, when it has moments that, that build up to a crescendo, and it's supposed to you know evoke a reaction out of you, like, oh, or whatever, mm -hmm. and the more you watch it, it, it does the impact doesn't lessen, you know? You still get stressed out at the end when yeah. the, the self destruct is counting down and all that, and yeah. you know, uh, and, and and you're just waiting for some for it to pop up behind the corner every time they run around a corner or something like that. It's just, just waiting yeah. for it to happen. And we're not going to do a spoiler alert on this one. I mean, you've either seen it or you haven't. If you haven't seen it, what the hell are you doing watching this video? Go and watch it now. I don't care if you're 13. Yeah, just find stop a way the to video now find a way to just spoilers. you know behind your parents' back or something. But um. Uh, but everyone's seen this. It's just you know. Um, well, I have a few people in my class who haven't seen it because it's old. Jesus Christ! And my class is full of nerds. Yeah, and, and so that's quite huge. And especially now in the day of Blu-ray, you get to it. Just looks. It look. It looks like it could have been made yesterday. Like the, the, yeah. the sta it holds up. So there's a couple of maybe the, the digital effects. You know, like on the screen maybe, but just. There's not much that really dates it to when it was made, and that's another great thing about it. It just it just feels, and it was one of the first films. Well, maybe not, but it was one of the most notable ones to really bring in the idea of um, this. Yeah, I guess Star Wars did it first, but the lived-in kind of sci-fi, because a lot of films had clean white spaceships, you know, and all that kind oh, of yeah. stuff, and then Star Wars had more like dirty, rusty kind of things, and then this very much implemented that. And Ridley Scott always said it was kind of like truckers in space kind of thing. And the characters are great. The actors the are great. Pfft, so good. Now that's what you call acting. Yeah, you got you yeah. got you got so many great characters on there. You know, from uh, I, I always forget the guy's name. The black guy. He's he's funny. Uh, he's just you know a, a fun character to watch along with Harry Dean Stanton. They they're a great kind of double act in the film. The two kind of uh, engineers, I suppose. I love that bit uh, when they kind of they land on the planet and they the ship is damaged. And how long is it going to take to fix it? And Harry Dean Satin's like, oh, about 17 hours. And about then the black guy's like, about 25 hours, hours you know. <laughs> They're just goofing off and stuff and screwing with Ripley and everything. Yeah. Sigourney Weaver is Ripley. Amazing, you know. Uh, again, that, that, She is... I love her. Oh, uh, yeah. She's, she's my favorite actress. I don't think she's... I want to watch I, Aliens now. Yeah. We're talking about this and I just really, really want to watch Aliens yeah. right now. Yeah. Um, again, yeah. She's not the best actress in the world. She's probably my favorite and it really is down to those two films. You know, the two Aliens. The, the first and second one and she's just so good in it. And when you watch Alien, she isn't really pegged as the main character from the beginning, which is what I love. It really is kind of like, you know, again, the crew, the crew starts getting picked off one by one until it's Ripley and she, she is a, kind of a one of the main characters she shows a lot of fire and stuff and she doesn't take any shit I like her relationship with Ash the um, played by Ian Holm Bilbo Baggins um, I like their kind of uh, they kind of uh, they kind of they, they bang heads a lot you know they, they really have got this and he's great Ian Holm in this film he's so kind of Something, something like there's again. There's something so off about it. Yes, there's something so off about it. You him. notice it from the beginning. Yes. Really, but then again, you just met this guy, so you don't know. But there's something yeah. about him. Yeah. It builds up. And then up. you find out what it is, and it's just. Yeah. Such a great. Yeah, it's great. Like the scene where he's like he's examining the, uh, the body of the face hugger, mm. and Ripley kind of almost creeps up on him, and and she's like, "What are you doing?" He's like, oh, "I'm just just doing this," you know, and he seems kind of uncomfortable. And he's like, is there anything you wanted? You know, like he's so kind of standoffish and stuff. Yeah. Um, and yeah. No social intelligence in that one. Yeah. And but also how like every decision he makes makes you go, what? 
or or like right, no, yeah. listen to her, you know. Yeah. Because he, you know, he's always throwing the he spanner does, in the works. Yeah, and everything he he does is like, why would you do that? No, you you kind of disagree with what he's doing the whole time, and yeah. then you find out what you do. He's a very interesting character, and, and it really makes you. Th I mean, obviously we've seen the film so many times, but you know. Even even still watching it now, you, you kind of I enjoy watching all the little nuances. I always see something new in the film. You know, the rest of the cast are really good too, because obviously there are characters who stand out more than others. But the rest of them, they really do a good job in just kind of being there, reacting to everything. You know, mm -hmm. um, like uh, Tom Skerritt as Dallas. You know, not an amazing character. He's just the captain of the ship, and he makes decisions. Yeah. That's about it. But he does it well, and he doesn't. You know, he just solid job. You know. Um, not everyone can have the, the great performance, so to speak. The alien design is, is great. I mean, what more can we really say? Oh, the alien is brilliant. Yeah, it's, 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 uh, it's just, I can't even describe how great it is if you just think about like all the monsters that you see in movies and things like that. It the cat does great too. <laughs> the cat does great. I feel bad for it though. Yeah. And, uh, That's another thing that stresses me about, out about the movie, that like, I can't relax. Yeah, the cat. Because there's a cat on board. <laughs> and I, I know what happens, you know? But it's just, it stresses me out so much. Yeah. And then I think about Lily, and I'm like, if, yeah, I would never bring her up there. <laughs> yeah, why did they bring a cat up into onto a, why an oil refinery? Why would she make the other guy go and try and get the cat that was hers? I'd be like, <sighs> fuck you, I'm going to go find Lily myself. You go wait, wait, wait. alien shit. Who, who are you talking about now? When they were looking for the alien, yeah, when it was still small, right, uh, the cat was in the locker, right, yeah, and she asked the first guy who got. I don't think it was her cat. I'm not even sure who the cat is supposed to. I'm not even sure who owns it technically. I don't. Well, she owns it after this. Well, yeah, she she couldn't, yeah, I guess adopt it away. But um, anyway, uh, is there anything else we can really add about it? You know, obviously, it's clear that we love it. You know, um, is there anything else you you really want to touch on? Um, well, like you said, the spaceship itself, how they made it and stuff. In the beginning, the camera just pans through. I was thinking and shows that. you everything. And it's just really, really slow. But it's still got like, it's almost like it's something going to pop up now. Because the suspenseful music is still there. And you see the corridor just go on forever. It's just like, oh, it's brilliant. And everything just looks great. Yeah. And, uh... And and it's a really it's really big though. I mean that's the thing is is like where do you look for it? You know where how how can you possibly work your way through that ship and kind of say okay it's not there? But then it can then it's using the air ducts. I mean it's just, it's brilliant. It really is just like there are two things I don't like about the movie though. Okay. That were there might be more, but there are two things that bring bug it on, me. bring it on. We're, we're gushing so they much. Just, we need some sort of negative. They just bug me every time I watch okay. it. It's when the black guy dies. Okay. There is no screaming. It's just. Okay. You know, it's, it's just silent, but you can tell, like, there's supposed to be sound coming out. Ya Yafit Koto, that's his name. Just because we kept saying the black guy. I, remember, okay. I, I, forget, I forget the character's name, as much as I love the film. But, uh, you know, yeah, that, that's the actor's name. Yeah, okay. so, you can't even... Yeah. Yeah, like, uh, there's no sound coming out, and, and I would like there to be screaming. Not that, not that I would like to hear screaming, but it just looks so off. Okay. From everything else, because the, the blonde woman... She's just screaming so much. And I don't like the scene where she gets uh, <coughs> handled by the alien. Right, it, it, I mean, it's not explicitly a rape scene. I mean, you see that the alien's tail no, very you suggestively know what, you know go it up. Yeah, it's. And you hear it on a monitor or something when uh, Ridley is looking for them. It's right. just the way she's. You mean Ripley? Oh, right, Ripley. <laughs> Ridley was in the movie. Ripley Scott. Uh, <laughs> Uh, you you can kind of hear that there is um, there's stuff going on yeah. thrusting going on in a way. I don't know if you can hear that. Yeah, I don't know. You can because I listen for it this well, time. Well, here's here's one. And thing. there's not a normal way of screaming dying. It's there's mm. jumping or something because there's just uh, yeah. So I don't like that part because what? I understand the face hugger because that it, that just needs to. Yeah. Do its thing yeah, to yeah, become yeah. something. Yeah. But what good does the alien have to do with it? Well, yeah, I, I, I don't, I don't, I don't know the answer to that question. It's, it's such very a very evil dead for me. It's like, such a why would the tree do that? To the <laughs> it's such a fleeting moment that I, I don't really uh, think about it that much. Maybe and it's because I'm a girl and I just find the whole sure, thing, sure, that's a completely you know? different perspective on it that I hadn't thought of. I just find everything like that uncomfortable. 
Right, so here's, here's, an, here's a question for you. How do you feel about the idea, or do, we, do you even see it, the, the sexual kind of uh, undertones with the design of the film? Like, uh, the aliens, they're very phallic, you know, like, and also... I have actually, I think we saw that on the, yeah. the thing, how his design is kind of very <coughs> penis-y. Yeah. <laughs> but but and on the other on, and on the other side of it as well. If you look at the the entrance way to the ship that they go in, it, it's it's a certain shape that really certain, yeah. I have not noticed that. It, it definitely. But for me. But I would never have noticed any of that if he hadn't said it. Yeah. Um. For me. I don't look at it like that. Because people do talk about that a lot, and I see it. Um. But it doesn't really it doesn't really add anything for me. But it doesn't even it doesn't take anything away from me either. I just wanted to comment on that because a lot of people mention that. I guess um, it just makes it more vulgar and more. Yeah. It, Bit more sinister. Um, yeah, and more bad in a way. I don't know. Yeah, and then then there's you know, you, you can argue why they had Sigourney Weaver take her clothes off at the end of the film, but I definitely feel like it it leaves it her. Makes me want to work out. <laughs> it, 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 I think I think it makes the scene a bit more uncomfortable because she's so exposed, you know, like in that moment when. It pops out again at the oh, end. Oh, true. I, you know? I don't even think about that. Maybe so... the aliens like, well, hello. <laughs> <laughs> Um, we watched the, the theatrical <laughs> cut. Uh, we usually watch the director's cut. I usually watch that. Um, yeah. But I thought I would just check out the theatrical again. Um, it's Is the, the slap missing? Yes. What's there a slap? Yes. The, 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 there's a scene where Veronica Cartwright and Sigourney Weaver get into a tussle and proper bitch slap, Why like proper. Why would they cut that? I don't know, but they uh, Ridley Scott put it back in under the director's cut, and it's a great scene, and it's a real scene. Like she slaps her for real. Like I think Ridley Scott said, just give her a slap, and we'll just see what she does. You know, so. Um, um, she does have a bruise after that, though. I don't think it's a bruise. I don't know what it is. It looks like a proper but also, bruise. But also, the scene you're thinking of where she's got a bruise, is way after the slap. It's like mm. an hour after it. Also, anyway. they kind of missed when she's having that nosebleed after talking or fighting with Ash. Right. Well, we never saw her get hit. Well, that's she's bleeding. It might just be the stress or just <laughs> continuity. I'm know. so stressed out. I'm just nosebleed. Oh, the aliens and shit. Yeah. I think one, we, we've said enough great things about it. One thing I think is really great is how it's so slow at the beginning. It takes, it's slow it takes so long to get go. I mean, the first six, seven minutes of the film, camera just going around the spaceship and there's like nothing. It's just like, you just hit, you just see the computers going, dee -dee -dee -dee, you know, like it I takes so long. I would want to so show long. that shit off if I made that movie. Right, yeah. I'd be like, look at all this shit. But it still works. It still works despite the slow pace. I mean, it picks up towards the end, obviously. Um, and I as, don't think it's slow. I think it's slow paced. It takes a long, a long, a long while to get going. That's not a bad thing. I enjoy the slow pace because everything on screen is so good and it's so and it's so engaging. But um, slow pace in the right. Anyway, um, the director's cut, theatrical. Uh, just to, to weigh in on that, I think they're both good. They're both good. I know that really Scott trimmed some things for the director's cut. It's a little bit shorter to make it a bit more tighter, I guess. And there's the scene where Ripley sees Dallas, like kind of. Um, uh, after he was attacked by the alien and you see him in the the cocoon you know that we go on to see in aliens and then she has to kind of burn him with the flamethrower so that's in the director's cut and i, I thought something was missing. but i kind of like not seeing that to be honest because I, f I feel like just within the continuity of watching the series once you get to aliens and you start seeing the cocoons it's something brand new you know did she burn him because he said kill me I, I can't remember to be honest he must have I don't. I, th I think he might be about to die, or I think he's probably been. It's during. It's, it's during the end. He's gonna... It's during the end when the ship's about to blow. So she probably just did it, you know, for whatever reason. But um, I can't remember off the top of my head. Anyway, I think I kind of prefer the film without it. I kind of just like that that gr that great scene when Dallas is going through the the vents, and the alien just turns around. It's a great jump scare, and then you never see him again. And I yeah. prefer not seeing him again. But they do lead up to him being taken away somewhere because I thought about no that. blood no yeah. trace of him yeah. no trace of him no blood and yeah. I'm like fuck off I oh, know like there would be no blood but I, I like the idea like, like what the fuck did he do with him and then you never know like I like that to be honest so but I like I, I like both cuts and they're not too drastically different from each other mm. so that's about it I guess is there anything else I could probably go on we for like just another go, half hour I know it's it's, it's it's a brilliant film I think it's I think it's a, I think it's a perfect film I think it's one of those rare ones that is just there's not there's nothing really wrong with it. They're really, if you, unless you go into continuity mistakes and things like that, which don't really count as far as I'm concerned. You can pick mistakes in films like that from you know, all across the board. But um, it's just great. It's it's better than Aliens. 
I prefer Aliens, it's one of my favourite films, but Alien is no doubt the superior film, and I think maybe the best horror film I've ever seen, you know, it's, it's, it's in the top three at least, it must be, I, I can't think of a horror film that is done as well as this, you know. Yeah, I, I, I can't think of a horror film that is as good as Alien, and uh, you know, I, I just can't, I can't think of one. It, it would be films like, actually let's leave it, because we're probably going to talk about it in this month anyway, so we'll, we'll just leave it at that. And uh, yeah, what more can we say really about Alien? Um, I admire its purity, it's a perfect film. It's pretty up there, yeah. It's pretty up there, yeah. <laughs> I'll put that on the website. Is it a film you must see before you die, Connie? Yeah, it's pretty up there, yeah. <laughs> there well, we go. it's pretty close to being perfect. Pretty close to being perfect, that's... With, with those two things that I mentioned. Sure, and the, Probably sure. more things, because the more I watch it, the more I see. Sure. And, and just to throw it in there, just for the sake of it, the chestburster scene, you know, that's... That's one. Of, that's one of the great scenes of all time. I mean, that that is going to be one of the most iconic. It's, it is already, and it has been since it came out. There's the stories of people like running out of the theaters and stuff when the chess poster scene happened, and how shocked everyone was. And I think really? that, yeah, I don't know how true those are. You can never really take those at, at you know complete uh, face value. But I just don't see people running out of the cinema. Well, or leaving maybe, leaving disgruntled perhaps, and kind of a little bit, a little bit disheveled. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it, it must have been pretty scary, I suppose, back in the 70s. I don't know, it's not that long ago, but I think it's a very effective horror film, so I could see that having an effect on people. It's quite a disturbing and disgusting scene. Yeah, but it's um, not by far the scariest scene in the whole thing. No. And, and I think I, it's scarier when they're looking for the face hugger in the room. Yeah, there's so many great parts of the when film. You just it's, see it as it's amazing. So the great. scene when they go on the ship and there's that massive alien in the massive suit. That's so scary, you're just waiting for the alien to wake not up even and that, like, just, grab him. Just the scale of it, the set is enormous. It's like, mm. holy shit. And then they kind of went to Prometheus and went, oh, well, that's not actually the alien. It's just a suit with a white guy inside. Oh, okay. All right, I'll give you one thing I could say, maybe as a negative. When the alien bursts out of John Hurt's chest, amazing performance by John Hurt, by the way, with a... <laughs> <laughs> yeah, brilliant. Uh, no, genuinely, it was good. And also, um, the alien comes out, terrifying, and then it just... <laughs> it's a little bit, it almost undercuts it a bit, because it's kind of, you can see it's just a little toy being pulled across the thing. Not toy. Let's not devalue it. They obviously created an animatronic little thing, but still. Yeah, did it have legs or was it slithering? Yeah, I don't know. It, it's so. But I mean, it looks like he's running. They cut it so quickly, so it's, yeah. it's it's not you can't really take away from it. But um, I, I find it a little bit comical. I always think Wait, about I always think about Spaceballs when they have John Hurt in the film and he's like, oh no, not again. <laughs> And it bursts out and it sprints across the table. Is that in the bar? And yeah, in the bar. And, yeah. it, and it does a little tap dance and song and dance yeah. across the table. I mean, I, I can't help but think of Spaceballs a little bit. But um, on that... That's exactly the way it looks. On that note, thank you for watching. Hope you enjoyed. Leave all of your gushing thoughts about Alien down below. I'm sure everyone loves this film. Uh, most people, anyway. Um, and leave your thoughts. if you don't, it's if you okay. Don't. Yeah, if you don't, it's okay. And feel free We're to share your thoughts. We're not going to hit you. No, but... Um, <laughs> We'll, 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 we will just hunt you down, find you, and uh, make you watch it again and again. On Blu-ray. Both cuts. On loop. You should finish now. I should, shouldn't I? Yeah. And that is it. We've come to an end. We've, we've exhausted all possibilities. Well, probably not, but, you know, it's time to just end it now. Thank you for watching. This has been the 100th episode of the Epic Film Challenge. Two thousand movies to see before you die. Only... 901 to go. Let's just start on the 101th right now.